What's up, basketball fans? Back with me, Rocky Padilla, on another episode of Stay Home Interview. And we got a special guest again from the Philippines, Mr. President, Gabe Norwood. How you doing, Gabe? Good, good, man. Good to see you. It's been a while. I know, man. It's been a while. And then, honestly, I wish we can do this in person. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Because <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. But hopefully, yeah. everybody doing well in Manila during this crazy time. Yeah, for sure. The family's well. We're we're healthy, and you know, just praying for the the world. You know what I mean? Everybody's going through it right now. I know, man. Hopefully, everything gonna get better soon. But Gabe, you have a great career so far. <laughs> so far, not yeah. Over yet. <laughs> so you were part of history with different teams. Let's start with the George Mason incredible okay. Cinderella story in 0506 and made it to the final four. Um, yeah. That, that inc incredible run was stopped by the eventually the champions, Florida Gators. You had a chance to play against Al Horford, Corey Brewer. I think they got Joe Kim Noah too. What can you yeah, remember though yeah. from that historic run? Man, uh, just how much fun we had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're the underdog, we're the Cinderella story, uh, an 11 seed. And just to go through the process, we had a really special team. You know, um, the year before, we had no seniors. So it's rare, very rare in college basketball, especially in the States, where you return the same team two years in a row. You know, we added a couple of uh, freshmen. But other than that, we had the same same roster from the year before. So we really grew together. So it made the trip that much more fun. You know, we played open the tournament against Michigan State. And they had uh, Maurice Ager, Paul Davis, Shannon wow. Brown. And then we turned around and – we beat them. Then we played North Carolina with like Tyler Hansborough, um, oh, Danny yeah. Green. Danny Green was young though; he's only a freshman. And who did we play? We played Wichita State next, and then you beat uh, Connecticut. And they had Rudy Gay, Josh Boone, Hilton Armstrong. So it, it was just wild to be a, a part of that journey and to play minutes. You know what I mean? I wasn't kind of just standing on the side watching. To, to be out there on the court was awesome. Wow, you guys actually beat UConn and North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, UConn was the number one overall seed uh, that year. They, they were stacked, they were stacked. Wow, Marcus Williams, crazy. that was in the league for a little while too, yeah. And then you came to the Philippines in 2007 and yeah. played for the national team right away, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, when you came to the country as Gabe Norwood, who is, a, who is a Phil M, played high-level D1 basketball. Was there any pressure on you to produce right away? Uh, for sure. You know, it, it's one of those kid things, especially, you know, as a younger player, almost like a kid coming into the, a professional situation. Um, you put pressure on yourself already, but then you also, you know, you hear the media and the expectations and things like that. So there was definitely pressure, but I think I was blessed to be with really good veterans. You know, that first national team, Jimmy Alaba, Gassi Taolava, you know, Kirby Raimundo, Don Don Hunteveros, like some of the bigger names, uh, JJ and Mark with Enebra, Fast and the Furious at that time. So I had really good veterans that, that really taught me a lot. I was the only kid fresh out of college on that national team. So it was pretty cool to be around, you know, experienced players, uh, experienced pros. And there are a lot of Phil Am players in the PBA. You guys like a very strong family together. When someone's kids having a birthday party, everybody show up. <laughs> so yeah. can you just speak on this, how everybody like really cool with everybody, even though with, uh, everyone come from a different teams in the PBA? Yeah, I, I mean, that's the cool part, I think, of, mm -hmm. of the PBA. You know, all the teams are based here in Manila. It's unlike the NBA and, you know, EuroLeague and stuff. We're not doing a lot of traveling. So we naturally see a lot of faces uh, all the time and you build a community, mm -hmm. especially with guys who have, share the same experience, you know. Um, coming from the States or you know how it is here, they, there's guys from New Zealand or Australia, from Canada, from Europe, who all, all are just blessed to be able to come back here and represent their roots and their family and do the game of basketball. And then you are very lucky and blessed too that you were able to share court with NBA superstars. Yeah. Superstars, like if you remember, we're talking about 2011, it was like a yep. movie, I think. I still can't <laughs> believe it happened actually. So yeah, they were, I think Kobe, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, MVP yeah. Derrick Rose, uh, yeah. James Harden was in Manila playing against uh, PBA All Star and also the Gillas team. And shout out to Kuya Nuki Sabio for 
getting yeah. into the game. <laughs> but did awesome. you get a chance to, to talk to any of those players and pick up their brain? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it wasn't too much basketball. You know, mm -hmm. I think it was downtime for them. It was, it was one of those things where they were just happy to get out and, and run up and down the court in front of a crowd. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was cool. I got to talk to Kevin Durant a little bit. He's from he's from Maryland, and that's where my dad's side is from, um, the same area from PG County. So it was cool just to kind of mention that and and mention some similar names that we both knew. And then it was pretty cool to sit and talk to Kobe for a little bit. Uh, oh wow! It was myself, Kobe, and uh, Danny Siegel who were all sitting down, and it was kind of wild because we all graduated high school in Pennsylvania, and we won all won state championships. So it, it was kind of cool. It was like the topic of conversation. And, and Kobe was just super cool, man, super laid back and and took the time to really sit down and talk to us and just kind of build a cool little bond there. It was, it was a pretty cool experience. Wow. But, yeah, that was like one of the craziest events I've seen in South, yeah. Southeast Asia. It was really yeah, packed, it was wild. I remember. All the way to the raft. It was like yeah. – and that was two days in a row. I could – it was funny, the PBA players, I don't even think we were able to get tickets for the next day. Like, we, <laughs> yeah, then they played Gilas the next day, and it, it was, I couldn't even get in. It was, it was wild. It was wild. But now let's talk about 2014, people woke up in Safia. One of my memorable moments watching a tournament, it's just crazy how many Filipinos were at each game. And, man, you guys yeah. had some close games against Croatia, Puerto Rico. I think Argentina and Greece also. But let's talk about that dunk yeah. though on uh, Scola. <laughs> <laughs> you were running on the break. Jason Castro passes yeah. you the ball. And boom, that poster on Scola. I never seen you that hyped before. You were pretty hyped. <laughs> so what went through your mind? Yeah. What went through your mind after that dunk? I mean, it was honestly the perfect, perfect scenario for a lot of guys who, who don't know me or haven't watched me play. I'm, I'm a two foot jumper. So okay. if I can get my two feet gathered and, and kind of take off like that, it's, it's perfect for me. So, you know, Jason dropped the pass. I got my two feet set and it just ha happened. I think, I think Scola was actually backpedaling as I caught it. So it's, you know, it's impossible to go backwards and forward at the same time. So I saw him backpedaling and knew I could just go for it and, yeah, it was early in the game. We were already making a run, and, you know, the crowd was going. The, the whole environment of the World Cup was, was unbelievable, man. So to get that dunk in, all those emotions came out of me so fast. Uh, and it really carried us, I think, through the game. We were right there the whole game. We had our chance to win. And then you also play against a young, a 19-year-old Giannis at the Kunpo yeah. in, the, in, FIBA, in the FIBA World Cup. Was he tough to guard, though, back then? I mean, he was super, super raw back then. They had they had a couple of NBA, you know, wing players in his position. So he came off the bench from what I remember. I, I'm not sure if he started against us or not. But, uh, you know, played played spot minutes here and there. But you could see the potential, man. He was just, just super long arms, like just physically pretty strong for his age. And it was actually funny walking around the hotel. Uh, we all stayed in the same hotel. So I think Milwaukee had just drafted him. Oh, wow. So they had like a scout or a coach with him, even at the World Cup, like walking around, training him, getting shots up, like getting him ready. So you could tell the Milwaukee knew what they were getting. They, they saw the potential. I hope fast. And then defense and Gabe Norwood goes hand to hand. <laughs> Who was your inspiration of growing up that actually wants to be a great defender? Um, Probably my dad. To be honest, uh, my dad coaches American football in the States. Um, he was a defensive back, cornerback, and safety. So he was always on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, defending re wide receivers and running backs and things like that, tight ends. So um, I think he always instilled in me that a lot of times my better offensive games were actually when I was playing more aggressively on defense. So, you know, it usually starts on defense for me to get started and get myself into a game. and. You know, it also makes me an asset. You know, not a lot of guys want to play defense all the time. So if, if I'm one of the few that want to play defense all the time, I get to stay on the court. So let's talk about the future of the Philippines basketball. Philippines has a lot of young talents. Like we got yeah. Kai Soto, AJ Du, and then uh, I just talked to Tardy Rafinha last week. He was, he's really good too. So the future okay. is bright 
for the GLS yeah. team for as they're getting ready for the 2023 World Cup. What do you think about the future of GLS basketball? Yeah. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. awesome, man. It's it's a it's a good time to be a, a fan of Filipino basketball. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like you mentioned, Kai, AJ. Um, you know, you got guys who who knows may be eligible by 2023. You got guys like Remy Martin that just played oh, yeah. at Arizona State and um, PA Clark at Virginia. Um, just a ton of guys, Jalen Green, who, who carries Filipino blood. It's just an awesome time. And those are just the ones worldwide. There's so yeah. much talent here in the country. You know, Carl Tamayo, who's one of my favorite players that I think, you know, people will keep an eye out for. Um, just talent from guards all the way up to bigs. And I think that's a big difference now. It's a lot of, you know, tall, bigger guys. You know, my time, it was really just Junmar, you know, Asi and Mick, Anisi, Eric Mink were a little bit before Danny Siegel, but now, you know, it's Jumar, Greg, Japet, yeah. Raymond Almazan in terms of like really height. But it, the future big guys now, are, it's super skilled. We got some athletes in there too. So it, it should be fun time. So I just, like I mentioned, I saw your uh, future with uh, Bu Belga on Extra Rice. And I know you major yeah. in journalism. So any yeah. chance? After basketball, maybe you're gonna be a basketball reporter, or you have your own show on TV. Man, we'll we'll see, we'll see. I I have to dust off my journalism skills. I gotta dust them off and see if I still have it. But uh, no, it, it's definitely something that you know could keep me around the game. Um, I'd love to to stay around basketball when I'm done, whether that's coaching or commentating or or something like that. So we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Last one, Gabe. Uh, do you have? Do you still have any goal that you want to achieve in basketball? Um, for me personally, in the, in the PBA, uh, I want to win an All Filipino Championship. We Rain or Shine has never won one. Mm -hmm. We've won two in the, the separate import conferences. So I think that'd be really big for our management and in an awesome way for me to you know pay them back for their loyalty to me and my loyalty to them and our relationship. Um, over the last now 12 years of, of playing for Rain or Shine. So that'd be awesome. And then outside of that, maybe somehow being a part of, of getting the country to the Olympics, whether that's coaching staff or just support in any way, I, I think that'd be awesome to see. All right, before I let you go, one more thing. What's the best thing about being a dad for three sons? Shoot. <laughs> Just seeing yourself in, in three different ways. You know, I got, I have three sons and I honestly see myself in them in totally different ways, which is unbelievable. Um, and I see my wife in all three of them too. So just knowing that we came together and brought three, three special and unique lives into this world is, is, is an awesome, awesome role and awesome uh, responsibility. Uh, okay, thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate it, man, for taking some time off. I really wish still we could do this again, maybe in person when everything is all done. Yeah, we'll do it for sure, man. We'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah, and take care in Manila. And guys, don't forget to follow Gabe Norwood on Instagram also at GNorwood5. I got it right, right? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yes, Gabe, stay healthy, stay yep. safe, and uh, good luck whenever the season is back <laughs> again. <laughs> Appreciate it, Rocky. Good to see you, man. And uh, hoping you and the wife are good and, and take care. Thank you so much, Gabe. Uh, Gabe. And everyone, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next video, guys. Peace.